welcome to Low Cell Life. My name is Sarah and on this channel we talk about salicylate sensitivity which is basically kind of like an aspirin allergy and it's basically in everything including fruits, vegetables, cosmetics, perfumes, all sorts of things. But you might find this video valuable if you have a lot of allergies and you're looking for a really safe shampoo. Uh, you might uh, be interested in trying this product out. So the question is, have I found the best shampoo ever that is a true, real shampoo, not just bar soap or something you can find in your kitchen, but an actual shampoo that actually cleans your hair, it's a true detergent, it's pH balanced, you know, the whole works. So the question is, did I find it? And I think the answer is yes. So this, uh, so the product I've actually been sitting on for a few months and I wanted to try it out and make sure that I didn't have any reactions. Generally, like I can use the clear uh, salicylate free shampoo or the free and clear shampoo, but I tend to have a reaction over a long time. Like after a month or so, I start having a little bit of hair loss. So not my favorite to use long term. This product I've been using since April pretty consistently at least once or twice a week. Generally I wash my hair every about every three to four days. Uh, this is the product. It is, oh by the way I'm not sponsored. I'm also not a doctor and yeah I'm just a person with salicylate sensitivity so that take whatever with a grain of salt. Okay so this is uh, called Clearly Clean. It is a hair and body wash and it only has three ingredients. So if you have a corn allergy or a palm uh, kernel, a palm oil allergy, just click off now. But basically those are the two main ingredients. Um, this is sold by National Allergy, which is obviously for people with allergies. and. They run about 10 to $15 for a 16 ounce bottle. I also just realized that they have a one gallon uh, refill bottle, which would be great, especially if you have families. So the nice thing about this is that, you know, it, it's a green product. It hits all of your little check boxes as far as, you know, uh, it doesn't experiment on animals, uh, responsible, breaks down the environment, all that kind of stuff. So that's, that's nice, but what we really wanna know is what's going on with the salicylates here. So this item only has three ingredients, four if you include water, and the main ingredient, the one that we always have a hard time with, is that the surfactant, the detergent that is used, is actually based from palm kernel oil. Uh, so this is interesting because almost all of the natural uh, surfactants, right, this is stuff that uh, attaches to your grease and mixes with water and removes it from your hair. Generally most, like the old style stuff used to be sodium lauryl sulfate which was used quite, quite often. The natural stuff usually is based off a of coconut. Now coconuts are high in salicylates so the question is can we find a different detergent that's not made from coconut and even the salicylate free shampoos like the clear shampoo or a low allergy, you know, safe for eczema, psoriasis, allergies, that kind of stuff. The free and clear shampoos, they also use a coconut based detergent. So this one actually uses palm kernel oil, uh, palm kernel based. So very interesting. They also have a vegetable based glycerin. Glycerin is really generally very processed. So even if it's from something it probably doesn't have salicylates in it because it's so processed, but it doesn't say what the source for that is, so that's kind of, you know, so-so. And then it says that it is pH adjusted to preserve uh, using naturally sourced citric acid. So if you have, some people are sensitive to citric acid. Uh, it is not a salicylate, but some salicylate amine folks might be sensitive from it, but here it specifically says that it's from corn. And that's it. There's no perfumes, no dyes, no ingredients in it that smells like anything. You know, like cocoa, cocoa, cocoa butter, the shea butter, those are great, but they do have a fragrance and I don't necessarily always like those natural fragrances. So just something to think about. This doesn't smell like anything. Uh, it is a little tiny bit on the thinner side compared to other shampoos that I've used. So uh, that's just something to consider. Uh, I've 
purchased a lot of handmade soaps. If it's runny or not, it still is just a soapy. Like think about Castile soap, like that's super runny. Okay, so I'm just throwing that out there just as a little heads up. Uh, I, because my hair is thick and I wash my hair every three days, maybe four days. Sometimes I try and hit five days if possible, but uh, you know, there's a lot of it. It's really straight. Sometimes it gets a little bit matted, you know, and weighed down with the grease. So in those cases, I might wash shampoo my hair two or three times. Uh, I feel like you always have to wash your hair twice. And you know, I mentioned it to my hairdresser when I took it. I said, you definitely have to use this twice. And she was like, well, you should use all shampoos twice. Cause one is to, you know, remove the grease. And the second one is to actually wash your scalp. So, you know, basically it's not that weird. I'm just saying it doesn't feel quite the same as like an herbal essence or like head and shoulders or another traditional shampoo. So just throwing that out there. Okay, the second thing that I was really, really excited about and I wanted to try and I haven't yet, I hadn't yet until the other day, but it says bubble bath on there. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I haven't had a bubble bath in probably Let's see, I think I'm just around past my five year low sal anniversary. So uh, yeah, it's been five years since I've had a proper bubble bath and uh, <laughs> I finally got it. I tried it out. I will show you uh, kind of what uh, I put two tablespoons in for a tub and uh, I'll show you what the level of bubbles look like. So if you have little kids and they want bubble baths and you've been like, you know, holding back because you're afraid of reactions, uh, this might be a great product to try. Uh, the bubbles lasted about 20-30 minutes. Uh, I, my bath was probably only about 30-40 minutes, so uh, they lasted almost the whole time. Even when I got out, there were still bubbles on my skin. So, you know, super fun. So excited. I'm curious if, I mean, you don't want to buy dye-free product and then add dye later, but it does open up a whole can of worms of what you could possibly do. Um, with your own ingredients that might be safe as far as like you know your own homemade cosmetics and that kind of thing so oh and then of course the results I did wash my hair today I wore a bright shirt so you can see it if you wanted to but I washed my hair earlier today and I did not do anything else except for blow dry it it was damp for about two three hours I finally took a hair dryer to it and dried it on a cool and warm setting. So it's just about completely dry, but I did not put any product in here. I did use a little bit of the clear conditioner just on the lower like five inches and a very small amount at that. So um, that's what it looks like. I've been mostly using this. Sometimes I'll use a lard liquid soap in addition to this or instead of this once a week or so. But uh, this is this is what you got. So it's clean. It feels good. It doesn't smell. I don't have a reaction from it, and my hair's not falling out. So altogether, I think I found the perfect product for myself. Let's talk about palm palm oil real quick because that might be something you have a question about. Uh, palm oil. If you're my one viewer that probably has a true allergy to it, uh, it should be safe for salicylate sensitive people. There are three different types of palm oils. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, ARPA, the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital Allergy Group, they produce basically the gold standard for salicylate sensitivity, uh, says that palm oil is negligible in salicylates. I have never had a reaction to it. However, there are a couple different types, and so it's just a good idea to keep that in mind. One is that there is a kind of a virgin or like cold press natural one uh, version where the fruit of the palm, palm fruit, is pressed, and that tends to have a reddish color to it. I don't know if that has ever been tested or if that's rolled into our pause suggestion of palm oil. I kind of doubt it is. And if there's going to be a risk of anything having salicylates in it, I would say that that would probably be the highest. 
just because you've got a lot of flavor, it's not processed, you've got dye in there, it's from a fruit. You see where I'm going with this. Okay, the second option is palm oil. And that is a, basically after you have like the first press or two or three of the palm fruit, you can have basically a really refined version. And that is generally a very, cheap and mass produced oil. That one is probably what our pot is recommending to use. It's just, you know, a very clean, a very clean oil. So uh, that that's an option. And then uh, the other place where oil can come from, from the palm, and in this case derived uh, for this surfactant, is palm kernel oil. So you've got the actual seed or like the nut inside of the fruit. That is what is pressed, kind of like almond or I'll stick with almonds, but basically you have the nut in the center, the seed, and that is pressed and that also produces uh, an oil. So generally I haven't really heard uh, of any of them causing a reaction, but like I said, the the first press of the fruit would probably be the most likely, but our paw says it should be okay, and I haven't seen any uh, actual tests of them being tested, so just throwing that out there. All right, I think that's all I've got for today. Again, this video is not sponsored, it's just me experimenting with things as time goes by, trying to find the very best products for me to use, and if I find something good, I will share it with you. Oh, I also, um, I also saw, I ordered some cleaning products, but I have not used them. So it, when I give those a try, I will let you guys know how I like them. If you've used any of their other products on their website, let me know uh, in the comments below, let everybody know. Um, and yeah, I don't think you can get this. I bought this directly from the company. I haven't seen it on Amazon or other places. And they do not advertise that they are a low salicylate or salicylate free shampoo, just that they're really, um, you know, careful about how they source products and is generally for people with allergies or sensitive skin. So, all right, that's all I got for today. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook. If you found this content valuable and you don't want to miss content in the future, whether it be in a week or three months, whenever I post again <laughs> in the future, uh, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell for notifications. So uh, I will see you later. Thanks. Bye.